Imagine you have a tea kettle made up of copper and you fill it up with water that is 20 degrees. How much energy is required to raise the 20 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius if the copper tea kettle is 1.8 kilograms and the amount of water that we put in is 2.0 kilograms? That's precisely what we're trying to answer here, which is a calorimetry problem. And to do a problem like this, we have to refer to the heat capacity formula shown underneath on your screen, where Q is equal to M, the mass of the combined copper tea kettle and the water, multiplied to each material's specific heat capacity, which is the amount of heat needed to raise one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius, multiplied to the difference in temperature, which is 80 in this case. So let's go ahead and write all this down. We have the amount of heat, which is what we're looking for, written as Q, is equal to the mass of the copper, which is 1.8 kilograms. That gets multiplied to its specific heat capacity. And the specific heat capacity that's been given is in grams, whereas this number is in kilograms. So either you change this value or convert this value so that it is in kilograms, or you change 1.8 eight kilograms into grams, which I think is a better idea in this case. So if I change 1.8 kilograms into grams, I multiply that by 1,000, giving us 1,800 grams times that value. As you can tell, the gram unit will cancel out, which is what we're looking for. We also have to consider the water. The water is 2.0 kilograms. So I'll write down plus 2.0 kilograms made into grams is 2,000 grams. You may also write this down into scientific notation if you want to retain the amount of significant figures. But I'll just remember that this is two significant figures. That gets multiplied to its specific heat capacity, which is written right here as 1.0 calories per grams times Celsius. 1.0 calories per gram times Celsius. Again, the units cancel out nicely, and we multiply that to the difference in temperature. So 100 minus 20 is 80 degrees Celsius. So I'll write down 80 degrees Celsius, and the units for Celsius will cancel out, leaving us with a final unit of calories. Now, sometimes we want to report the amount of heat in joules. Right now, it's in calories. There is a direct conversion from calories to joules and vice versa. So if you ever see a specific heat capacity written as joules instead of calories, and instead of Celsius, Kelvin, that's equally valid. But your final answer would then be in joules. Let's go ahead and multiply this out. It's a simple calculation. We have 1800 times 0 0.092 plus 2,000 times 1, which is the same thing, multiply to 80. And we get 1.7 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, times 10 to the power of 5. 1.7 times 10 to the power of 5 calories is the amount required to raise this water from 20 degrees to 100 degrees. Before I conclude, I want to point out that sometimes questions like these will provide information in moles as opposed to mass. In this case, they provided mass in kilograms. If that ever happens, you could convert moles to mass by multiplying the number of moles of the substance to its molar mass. And that can be found in a periodic table. Or if they give you the molar heat capacity as well, you can use that instead of the specific heat capacity and you won't need to convert moles to mass before using this formula.